Good morning. Kalimera. I want to welcome our visitors this morning. If you are new to the area and are going to stay here in the Tampa area, please fill out one of these little cards that's in the front of the in the uh, pews in front of you and give it to one of our greeters who I who I'll introduce at the end of the sermon. Um, and I especially want to welcome Father John Bochu, who is the Proistamino at St. Barbara in Sarasota, who's visiting us this morning. And um, Father John is a dear friend from the time that he was a priest in Tarpon Springs and in St. Pete and now at St. Barbara's. There is a young man at uh, St. Barbara's named Father Gabriel Gada, who grew up in that parish, and he was ordained a priest a few months ago. And so he, he is, serves in Houston, Texas, and he came home this week to visit his family. And it's his first time ever coming back to his home parish as a parish priest. So Father John said, you know, you should have the church for yourself for a day to enjoy with your family, so I will go somewhere else. So I said, everybody wins. Father Gabriel wins. Father John wins. Father Stavros wins because I have help today. So that's why Father John is here today. Thank you, Father. I wish we could move here, but, but I'm, I'm glad he's here for a day. He is a, a very dear friend of mine for a long, long time. Um, this week, there is one divine liturgy, which is on Wednesday for the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. If you are a, a uh, Paul or a Paula or a Petros, uh, your name day is this week, and we'll have liturgy on Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. As most of you know, I'm leaving for summer camp later this week. I will be gone the next two Sundays. Um, a priest named Father John Stefaro is going to come from Atlanta. He's going to serve next Sunday. And a priest named Father Gregory is going to come from North Carolina in two weeks on the 10th. He will serve that day. I will be back here to serve on the 17th and then not on the 24th, and I'll be again on the 31st. But we will have Divine Liturgy every Sunday um, of July at 10 o'clock on the 3rd and 10th and 24th with visiting priests. So please come and welcome our visitors and uh, hear the same message through another mouth um, and the same service. That's one of the beautiful things about Orthodoxy is you can have any priest standing in front of the altar and you're going to have the same liturgy, the same grace of the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's beautiful when priests come and visit other churches because they don't have to ask, you know, how do you do things in Tampa? Because we do it the same way that everybody else does it. That is, that is the ethos of the Orthodox world. Today, in the Orthodox Church, is the Feast of All Saints. In most other Christian denominations that celebrate All Saints Day, it is the day after Halloween. It's November the 1st. That's how they got the name Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, all those who are hallowed and all holy. And now Halloween has become something totally different. But in most churches, All Saints Day is November 1st. In the Orthodox Church, All Saints Day finds itself the Sunday after Pentecost. Now, last Sunday, on the Sunday of Pentecost, we commemorated the Holy Spirit coming down on the disciples to give them the ability to speak the gospel in all languages, to take it to every corner of the world. And immediately in the church, the next message after you've received the Holy Spirit, and we all have received the Holy Spirit, all of us, we're all disciples, we're all students of Christianity, we've all received the Holy Spirit, so the church in its very next message to us says, now that you've received the Holy Spirit, go and do something with it. And the thing that we're supposed to do with it is that we are supposed to become saints. We are supposed to become holy as God is holy. That is the lesson of today. And anybody can become a saint. Anybody can become a saint. It, it just so happens this week, as I said, we're celebrating the feast of saints Peter and Paul who are two of the greatest saints in the church. In fact, they have the title, The Paramounts of the Apostles. We have the 12 apostles, and we may not know even all their names. Maybe you don't remember all their names, but everybody knows St. Peter and St. Paul because they were the tops of the apostles. But St. Peter and Paul were also among the tops of the sinners because they did among the tops of the bad things that you could do. I mean, what is about the worst thing you can do? You can kill somebody. That's a bad thing. St. Paul was doing that. He was persecuting the early church. And another bad thing that you can do is that you can deny Christ with Christ right there. And that's what St. Peter did. So the message of St. Peter and Paul and of All Saints Day is that anybody can be a saint. 
Even if you've had an awful life up to this point, even if you're doing sinful things in your life, you can turn your life around and you can be one of the greatest saints. And St. Peter and St. Paul are two examples of that. How can St. Peter deny Christ? And then he has the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And St. Paul, who was persecuting and killing the early Christians, became the greatest of all the apostles. They did that by a conversion, by a repentance, by a changing of orientation in their heart, in their mind, and in their life. And they became the greatest preachers of the gospel that have ever been known in Christianity. So that's St. Peter and Paul, and that's the potential for all of us. All of us have the, be, have the potential to become saints. That actually is the end goal of every life. We are obsessed with lists. We are obsessed with lists. I am obsessed with writing things down on lists. But that's not the list that most people are obsessed with. Most people are obsessed, obsessed with what list am I going to get on. So when we're in, in school, we're like, will I be on the dean's list? Will I be on the president's list? Will I be on the first place trophy list? Will my name be inscribed on the Stanley Cup? Where, will I have, hold the NBA trophy? What list will I find myself on? Now, many of those lists are important. I mean, it's good for a student to be on the dean's list. It's good for, for someone to be on the list of people who own homes. Everyone likes to be on a winning team, and we like to be on that list. But the most important list to be on is the list of all the people who have pleased God throughout the ages. Many times in the prayers of our church, at the end of the prayer, especially there's one prayer when the choir is singing the Pisayon hymn, we end the prayer through the intercession of the Theotokos and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. All the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. At the end of time, that's the only list that we need to be on. There are many people who are obsessed with getting their name on something. I remember someone told me years ago in a, in a rather bizarre conversation, actually, um, someone that's not connected to this church, actually, and they were obsessed with getting their name on things. And they said, you know, Father, in 300 years, no one is going to remember you. But everyone will remember me because they name a street after me in a building and all these kinds of things. And I said to him, sir, I don't really care if anybody remembers me in 300 years. As long as God remembers me, that's the only person I care about that remembers me. In 300 years, I don't want my name anywhere. I just want it on God's list. With all those who please God throughout the ages, that's really the only list that I want to be on. At the end of time, that's really the only list that matters. So you have to ask yourself, as we celebrate this Feast of All Saints, do you think that you're on that list of all the people that have pleased God throughout the ages? If God looked at your life today in 2016, would he say, you know, I'm pleased with you. You're doing a good job. What do you think that God would say? Now, in order to, to really meditate on that question, you have to do it very seriously and soberly and, and, and with humility. Because many of us like to put ourselves on that list. Like, surely I must be on God's list. I mean, surely I'm better than so-and-so and so-and-so, and I'm in the, in the 50th percentile maybe, or the 90th percentile. I mean, we sort of pronounce ourselves on God's list. But again, seriously, rhetorically for yourselves, you don't have to answer to me. Ultimately, you have to answer to God. You know, look at your life and say, you know, do, I, do you think, do I think that I'm on God's list? If God saw me and he sees me 24-7, do, do I please God? I'm sure at this moment I'm pleasing God. I mean, I hope I'm pleasing God. I'm in front of a bunch of God's people. I'm pleasing God. But what about later on when all the people are gone and I'm not in my vestments and I'm not accountable to anybody? I'm obviously I'm not going to do anything crazy and stupid in front of like a few hundred people. But what about later on? Is God going to be pleased with my conversations? Is God going to be pleased with what I'm watching on television? Is God going to be pleased with my language? Is God going to be pleased with my parenting? Is God going to be pleased with my marriage? Is God going to be pleased when I'm alone tomorrow in front of the computer? What am I doing while I'm on there? Am I looking at the sports shorts or am I writing something edifying for the people? When I'm answering the telephone tomorrow in the office, is my demeanor a demeanor that is going to please God? That's really the question to meditate on this week. Am I living a life that is pleasing to God? Never mind does it please me. Never mind does it please my friends. Never mind does it even please you. But does my life really please God? Hopefully my life is pleasing you at this moment. I'm not boring you. Hopefully my interaction with you as a priest is overall pleasing. But take all the people out of the equation. In my personal private life, 
Do I live a life that pleases God? If God looked into my soul, does he see a soul that's light or does he see a soul that's dark? Does he see a soul that's happy or a soul that's frustrated? Again, what would God say if he looked into your own soul today? Is that a soul that pleases God? Do you live a life that pleases God? And when we're talking about that prayer, if we said that prayer every day, and you heard that through the intercession of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints who have pleased God throughout the ages, would you find yourself on that list? And if God walked right into our church right now, would you, would you run up to him or would you cower away in fear? All right? These are the things that you need to think about and to meditate on. And if the answer is not a good one, if you're like, you know what? I live a life that's so far from God, I hope he doesn't come for me for a long, long time. If you think that right now, that's okay. Because we have these two people, St. Peter and Paul, that they felt like that at a certain point in their life. We have these two people, St. Peter and Paul, and among many others. In fact, most of those people that have pleased God throughout the ages, they had a period of life where they didn't please God. And what turned it around for them? They turned it around for them. They said, you know what? This is not a life that pleases God. I'm going to do better. All right, now how can we do that on a practical level? You get in a conversation later today, and you feel like using foul language, and you say, you know what? This does not please God. I'm going to refrain from that in the conversation. You are looking at something on TV that's not edifying, and you say, you know what? I'm going to change the channel because this does not please God. I get in a conversation, and I'm gossiping, and I'm tearing up somebody, and I say, you know what? This doesn't please God. I'm not going to do it. Tomorrow I'm sitting at the computer, and I'm tempted to look at ESPN for an hour, and I say, you know what? This is not what they pay me to do here. I am not going to do that. I'm going to do what pleases God. A daily choice to do what pleases God is what gets us on that list of all those that please God throughout the ages. You don't need your name on a building. You don't need to be on the Fortune 500. You don't even need to be on the dean's list, but don't tell my child that. <laughs> you need to be on the list of all the people that have pleased God. That is the list that you want to be on. And it's a daily choice to do what pleases God, and that's how you get on the list. And if you're not sure, if you're totally lost, that's what the church is for. The church is here to help you find that out. That's what the priest is here for, to help you find that out, help you figure that out, help guide you so that you're on that list, help guide you so you're in the right way. Now this week, I humbly ask for your prayers as I'm going to summer camp, along with in the next several weeks. Camp started today, actually, the first of five weeks. I go for week two and week three. <laughs> And we have several of our young people that are going next week and the following week and, and counselors throughout the summer. And I'm asking humbly for your prayers on our journey there. I know that the summer camp takes me away from my family and it takes me away from our parish family. And that's a sacrifice on my family and on our parish family. But that, in, in my humble opinion, is a, this is a worthy cause of sacrifice. Because people need to know about the Lord. And they need to know from the young age. The statistics say that 60% of our young people leave the church when they go to college. That means that the most critical group of people are the high school students. Because they are the ones that 60% of them are poised to leave. And if they don't have the message in a personal way to them, then they're not going to be here. They're not going to be on that list that pleases God because they're not going to be around God, because they're not going to know God. So somebody in our church has to go, I don't have that many gifts. I have some gifts. And one of the gifts that God blessed me with, I think, is the ability to work with teens. So I'm exercising that gift in going to this camp. And I'm asking again humbly for your prayers, for safety and for stamina and for wisdom to impart the gospel to them. And for wisdom and stamina to continue to impart the gospel to you. I'm going to be gone pretty much the month of July for camp and for vacation. And so just be patient with me. We'll continue the prayer team. Monica will keep a stack of all the people who call. And I will get to all of them as soon as I get back full throttle in August. God bless you and be with you. Please come in the Sundays of the, of the month to strengthen your position on God's list and to welcome our visiting clergy and to celebrate, regardless of who the priest is, the Divine Liturgy and the Holy Eucharist. And now if I can introduce today's greeters, if you're new to our community, I want to introduce Helen Cawthorn. Helen, come on up here. We're doing this a new way. 
Ella, so that people know who you are. Calliope Chigaris, come on up here, and, and Lisa Alcina, come on up here, Lisa. These are our greeters today. And if you're brand new to our parish and would like to join our church, fill out one of these cards, give it to one of these lovely ladies, and we would love to add you to our parish family. This is Helen, that's Lisa, this is Calliope. God bless you, and thank you for being here with us today. Amen.